No plant is more familiarly associated with Ireland than the shamrock. Because not only is it the national emblem in the way the rose is for England or the thistle for Scotland, but it has actually been registered by the Government of Ireland as its official trademark. You'll find it on the badger crest of virtually every club or organisation that wants to proclaim its connection to Ireland. And there's no better example than the IRFU, where the crest is a rugby ball surrounded by three shamrocks. And in fact, if you text the word Irish into your mobile phone, the emoji that jumps out at you is the shamrock. If I ask the question, what is shamrock? The obvious answer, of course, is that it's the plant that we all wear, or at least used to wear, on St. Patrick's Day. But if I want to know what species it is, what's the botanical nature of shamrock, the answer I get to that question will depend on what part of the country I ask the question in. Because in about half of the country, this is the plant that's used as shamrock, and this is lesser trefoil or yellow clover. But in another third of the country, this is the plant that's used as shamrock, and this is white clover. And there's a handful of other species that are used here and there in some other parts of Ireland. The two species look much alike at this time of year before they flower. Both have diagnostic trefoil leaves, but they are smaller in lesser trefoil, and those of white clover have a distinctive whitish chevron. Lesser trefoil is an annual, so it's easier to pick, whereas white clover is a chunkier plant, a perennial with a deep root, which makes it very hard to pull by hand. Once in flower, there's no danger of confusing the two, because one has large globular clusters of white flowers, the other smaller clusters of yellow flowers. Both belong to the same botanical genus as red clover, which we met in season two. So their pollination strategies are broadly similar, but targeted at somewhat different pollination cohorts. It's not too surprising that people are sometimes confused over the nature of shamrock, because the early English botanists in Ireland who wrote about shamrock were confused as well. Now, they did identify it with lesser trefoil or white clover as we do. But they also claimed that this was a plant uh, that was eaten in time of famine by the wild Irish. And clover is not a particularly edible plant, but informed commentators think that this is because they were confusing the Irish word for shamrock, which is shamar oak, young clover, which is an apt description of it because it's clover before it flowers. They were confusing this word with the Irish word for wood sorrel, which is shamsog, which was a plant that was eaten in early Ireland. For example, uh, the hermit monks of early Christian Ireland ate wood sorrel, and you may remember it featured in the diet of Wild Sweeney, whom we met when we looked at wild garlic in season two. And indeed, it has been argued that wood sorrel might be the true shamrock, because in St. Patrick's fifth century day, woodland was more widespread, and if the saint held this plant up before his open-air gathering of would-be Christians to help explain the mystery of the Blessed Trinity, which is what the connection between St. Patrick and shamrock is supposed to be, his audience would have had a better chance of seeing it than if he held up white or yellow clover to demonstrate the theological concept of three persons in one God. After all that, I hope it won't come as too much of a shock to devotees of St. Patrick among you to be told that, in fact, there is no connection between Shamrock and St. Patrick. The first reference to a connection only appears in the late 17th century. Be that as it may, the two are now almost inseparable. It's almost difficult to find an image of St. Patrick without his Shamrock in hand.